Hello everybody, welcome back to our channel. I hope that you guys are having a really great day today. In today's video, I am going to be showing you three different eyeshadow looks using the ColourPop Mint palette and I will also be using a few other items from the collection. So if you guys want to see a few looks with the ColourPop Mint palette, then just keep on watching. Starting out with the first eyeshadow look, I am grabbing my P. Louise eyeshadow base to prime my eyes. So for this first eyeshadow look, I am going to be doing a halo cut crease. So I'm going to be digging into the darkest green from the palette and I'm going to use a brush to pack this color to the inner corner and the outer corner. And remember, because it is a halo cut crease, whatever we do to the inner corner, we want to make sure that we match on the outer corner. I am also going to be taking this color and packing it right into the crease. So once I'm happy with the pigmentation, I'm just going to use the same brush to very lightly diffuse the edges and make them a little bit softer, which is going to make the next color a lot easier to blend. Next, I am taking this beautiful green and I'm just going to be packing this color right up above the previous shade. And repeating the same steps as before, I am now going to grab a different brush and I'm going to very lightly diffuse the edges. And to complete our gradient, I am going into this beautiful green from the palette and I am just going to start packing it right up above the previous color just like we did before. Once the color is packed, I'm going to use the same brush to blend the edges. And with this color, I am also going to do a bit more blending. So we are softening the edges, but we're also going to start the blending process. So I don't know if you guys remember, but normally when we start the blending process, we do lose a lot of the pigment. So what I'm going to do next is repeat all of the steps that we did previously. So I'm going back to the crease color first and I'm going to pack this color right into the crease and I'm just going to pack as much as I like until I'm happy with the pigmentation and I'm going to do a bit of blending and I'm going to repeat that process a couple of times. I can't include all of it here because it'll just be too long of a video but now I'm going back to the transition color repeating the same steps packing it lightly blending and again I will repeat this process until I'm happy with the way that it looks and lastly I'm going back to the darkest color which was the dark green from the palette and I'm going to repeat the same steps so packing the color just to build up the pigmentation one more time and I'm also going to blend as I go Anyway, now we can move on to cleaning the outer corner. So I'm just grabbing a Q-tip and cleaning the edge at an angle. Moving on to cutting the crease, I am using the P. Louise Blank Canvas. And I'm just taking my time with this since this is a halo cut crease. I am starting in the middle per usual. And yeah, I'm just creating the shape. And next, I am grabbing again the dark green from the palette and I'm just going to blend in the edges of the cut crease. And since this is a halo cut crease, we are going to create the same gradient that we created on the lid. So we already applied the dark green and now I'm moving on to the lighter green. And we basically just want to create that same type of gradient on the center of the lid. Next, I'm taking this shimmery frosty green from the palette and applying it right to the center of the lid. Thanks. 
So as you guys can see, I did end up covering up most of that medium green shade. So I went back into the shade and using a small brush, I just blended a little bit of that color back in so that we could have that gradient again on the center of the lid. Next, I am taking the Super Shock Shadow in the shade Flux and I'm just applying this to the inner corner. These eyeshadows are amazing. They have great coverage. They are actually a cream to powder eyeshadow. They don't crease at all and you can either wear it by itself or you can apply it under your regular eyeshadows. I'm also applying it to the lower lash line and then I'm going to come in with the powder eyeshadow right over it to just really make that eyeshadow pop. And for the eyeshadow, I am going back into the dark green and I am applying it to the outer edge and the inner corner of the lower lash line, leaving the center empty. For the center, I'm grabbing back that frosty shimmery shade from the palette that we applied on the top of the lid and I'm just applying that to the center of the lower lash line. And I'm also taking the same shade to go over the super shock shadow in the inner corner So my plan was actually to leave the waterline this color But then I decided that we needed a little bit more color So I am going over the super shock shadow with that beautiful emerald green color And I'm just using a very thin uh, liner brush from morphe for mascara, I'm using this one from Hank and Henry Beauty. It is one of my absolute favorite mascaras. It has two different wands and I just love it so much. Anyway, moving on. For lashes, I am using Tati Lashes in the style TL4. And this is the completed look for look number one. I hope that you guys like it. I really like how the center pops on this eyeshadow look and I really loved the shimmers from this palette. Anyway, let's move on to the next two looks which are going to be a lot easier. Moving on to look number two, I am going to prime my eyes again using the P. Louise eyeshadow base in the shade 2.0. So starting off the second look, I am grabbing this color from the palette and with a blending brush, I'm just going to start applying it all over my lid and my crease and even taking it up a little bit above the crease and I'm only applying this color about halfway. Next, I am going to be moving on to this green shade and using the same blending brush, I am going to apply it to the remainder half of the eye. So taking this color and I'm applying it to the lid, the outer corner, the crease, and again, taking it up a little bit above the crease as well. And I am also going to make sure that with this blending brush, I blend in both colors together so that we don't have have any harsh lines and it just blends really beautifully into a gradient with only these two colors. Next, I am taking the Super Shock Shadow one more time in the shade Flux and I'm applying it to the same places as I did in the first look. So inner corner, lower lash line and the water line. Moving on to the lower lash line, I am going back to the first color that we used and I'm just layering this color right over the super shock shadow. Next, I am also going to add a little bit of this green to the lower lash line.
And for the inner corner, I'm just grabbing this shimmery shade from the palette and putting it right there, right in the inner corner, just like I said. Sorry, I cannot talk today, or any day for that matter. But anyway, moving on to the fun part, rhinestones. So I'm gonna take my lash glue, and what I always like to do when applying rhinestones is that I like to put the glue on first, where I want the placement of the rhinestones and then I give it about 30 seconds to a minute for it to dry and then I start applying the rhinestones so that's the process that you guys are going to see here you don't have to do this of course but it honestly turned out so pretty and the rhinestones against the mint color looked really pretty so I definitely recommend this look if you guys want something easy but something with a little bit of sparkle at the same time anyway for mascara i am using it cosmetics lash blowout i believe it's called it's also a really good mascara anyway moving on to lashes i am using tatty lashes again but this time in the style tl3 and that's it this is the second finished eyeshadow look i hope that you guys like it and now let's move on like to you, number three if i like the attention if i like that you see me when no one else does if i like that it's easy to figure you out if i can have you now then easy is what i'm about do i want you or do i want the commitment do i like that you near me or am i indifferent do i like that it's easy and we are finally at the last eyeshadow look so i am starting off with this mossy green from the palette i am using a blending brush from a company called juno and company they are actually amazing brushes pretty affordable and a beautiful metally pink color but anyway i am just going to build up this color only in the outer corner area and um, because these colors are a little bit on the lighter side a little bit on the minty side uh, they do take a little while to build up pigmentation so this took me a little while to do i couldn't include the entire process in this video but i just wanted to give you guys a heads up in case you do get the palette you will have to spend a little bit of time building up pigmentation on some of the colors anyway moving on now Next, I am applying the dark green from the palette and again, I am keeping this color at the outer corner. And like I mentioned earlier, with this palette, you do have to build up a lot of the pigment. So I am going to dip into the shade a few times until I'm happy with the pigmentation and the blend. And once I am happy with the pigmentation and the blend, I am going to take a Q-tip and just clean off the outer edge at an angle. Moving on, I am going to take this shimmery green from the palette and I'm just applying it to whatever is left of the lid and I am also making sure that with the brush I blend in this color into the matte colors that we already have down so that it doesn't look too harsh of a transition from the shimmer to the matte and now I'm just taking this color and applying it right to the inner corner Next, I am taking the Too Faced Better Than Sex eyeliner and I'm just going to create a wing and with the wing, I am making sure that I follow the shape of the eyeshadow. That way it looks like the wing belongs and it follows that same shape. I don't know if that makes sense to you guys, but I usually don't like when the eyeliner just looks out of place so I just tried to follow the same shape of my eyeshadow but you can do your wing however way you like 
anyway now moving on to the lower lash line again i'm taking the super shock shadow in the same color that we used previously and i'm just using that as a base for the eyeshadow For the waterline, I am taking Urban Decay's 24-7 pencil in the shade Overdrive. And for the lower lash line, I decided to go back in with the little bit of the lighter green. I don't know, I just felt like it needed a little bit something extra. So yeah, anyway, for mascara, I am using this one from L'Oreal. I think it's called Big Bambi Eyes and it's actually a pretty good drugstore mascara and I have no idea why I sounded that way but anyway for eyelashes I'm gonna be using these Viva Glam Lashes from Dove Lashes And this is it. This is the completed last eyeshadow look. I am going to also show you a second way that you can wear this last eyeshadow look, but this is the first way and then I will show you the second way in just a few seconds. And really quickly, just wanted to show you a second way that you could do this eyeshadow look. So I'm just using the other super shock shadow that is in this collection. It's not a huge difference, but I did want to show you guys how it looked both ways. But anyway, this is the end of the video. I hope that you guys liked all three eyeshadow looks. Don't forget to subscribe if you did enjoy this video so that I can show you more like this one. And don't forget to follow us all over social media it is at glitter beauties the same way that it's spelled right on the screen and remember even if you don't subscribe i just appreciate you being here and watching but anyway thank you guys so so much for being here and i hope to see you on the next one bye